Hmm. Marcus Conti reporting on the debate. <laughs> the presidential debate. I watched it so you don't have to. <laughs> so, uh, number four. Democratic presidential debate down in Ohio. Ohio. So, um, 12 contestants on stage. Tell you about it. So, the number... I'll, I'll give you the winners and the losers. I know everybody wants... Who won? Who won the debate? <laughs> uh, who won the debate? Because uh, it's got to be a winner. It's got to be a winner in the American ethos. In the way we view things. Someone's got to win at the expense of someone else. Someone has to lose. Who are the winners? <coughs> Conti, just tell us. Who's the winner? And who lost? So I could go f fucking do the rest of my day. <laughs> uh, it's not, it wasn't that simple. So, here's the deal. There was, there is a, you know, there was clear winners, but it's what metric are you using? Is it a talent show? Is it a personality show? Is it, look at me, look how pretty I am, look how young and energetic I am, and uh, I want to be president more than anybody else? Or is it about policy? So the metric I use, of course, is policy. Right? The number one issue, the number one issue is money in politics, corporate tyranny. Right? Because unless you fix that, unless you stop the you know, 100 or 200 major corporations in this country from looting the country, looting retirement plans, looting the stock market, right? with all kinds of scams, all kinds of you know, stock buyback ripoffs, you know, junk bonds, however they do it, paying each other billions of dollars in in compensation, executive looting other country, evading tax, shipping jobs overseas where it's cheaper, literally hollowing out the major corporations in this country, <coughs> which was once a good idea, corporations. But unless you address that issue, the issue of um, uh, fraud, abuse uh, on Wall Street and in these corporations, uh, and the executives that get away with it, banks, you know, the six large banks that loot the country, nothing will change. Right? Nothing will change. You've got Trump, oh yeah, it's fun. It's fun to watch a meme of Trump killing off the press. But really, it's while we laugh, we die inside. The reality of of. The reality is that we're dying inside because the issue, the most important issue of money and politics, income and wealth and equality in this country is not being addressed. Now there's some certain metrics that you can use like uh, universal single payer health care, Medicare for all, single payer being the United States government. You could use metrics like that to see, to take the uh, temperature of the candidates. What do they think about Medicare for all? Do they think it's a good idea? Well, then you have an idea that you have an, a basic understanding that the pharmaceutical and insurance uh, uh, lobbies in this country are ripping the shit, ripping us off. So Medicare for all could solve that problem, will solve that problem. So that's one of the metrics that I use. So anyway, so let's talk about the debate. Right. So, so it's a 12-car pileup, 12 people, three hours. I think I said it was a two-hour debate yesterday, but it's a three-hour debate. A three-hour tour. This is the tale of our castaways. <laughs> three hours. But it didn't. It didn't. You know what? It, it could have been more of it. Still was. Every single speaker was cut off by the press, by uh, Anus Cooper and Aaron Barnett and the New York Times jerk-off. Mark, Mark starts with a T, his last name, right? Every single person that spoke got cut off by the press. That's bad precedence, first of all. Giving the press, the fake news, CNN, and, and, and Jeff Zucker, and the New York Times, that kind of control over the dialogue. Politicians should aggressively refuse to participate in that, but but they don't. 
Okay. They don't. <laughs> so, so I don't. I don't even know where to begin. So the so it starts off again. The number one issue. If I had to rank it, I'll give you the. I'll give you the winners right now. If I had to rank it in terms of, um, in terms of who dealt with the number one issue of corruption and money in politics, it would be number one Bernie Sanders. Number two. Elizabeth Warren, number three, I'll give it to Andrew Yang, number four, Tulsi Gabbard, and and Tom Steyer. A new a new face, Tom Steyer. So let let me do this. Let me get the the shit sandwiches out of the way. Total shit sandwiches. So we're in Ohio, Westerville, Westerville, Ohio, at a little university up there, outside of Columbus, Ohio. Twelve people are speaking. No opening statement. Three hours, 12 people speaking, right? So, Cory Booker, let's start there. Cory Booker, uh, uh, nothing, just, uh, he's just like, hey, I want to be the president. And, you know, I'm a vegan, and I, I want to be the president, and uh, it's just an empty, empty suit, smiling. He looks like a pig. He reminds me of a pig, a hairless pig, with his fucking stupid ears, and his, his, his ears are a different color than his face. He looks like a like a naked pig. With his big fucking horse teeth. I don't think he's got a big fucking head. <laughs> I just don't like him. I don't I think he's he's a he's a liar and a you know, he's a a, a Newark scum mayor. Uh, so get him out of the way. Beto O'Rourke is just all platitudes. I don't know how he's still hanging on. He's got the voice and he's got the look and he's got the um, the empathy but his he's a he's a billionaire son with all the wrong policy. Uh, gun grabber in Texas. Uh, so so get him out of the way too. Beto Rock gone. Cory Booker gone. Camilla Harris, I'll throw her right in the heap, right at the bottom of the heap. Because she's a shit sandwich. She looks tired, she looks old, she looks like she doesn't know what she stands for. She's Hillary Clinton. You could see her. When the question is presented to her, she, her face changes. She doesn't really know what answer you want to hear. Right? That's a person without a center. No center of gravity. She doesn't know what, what American people want to hear. She doesn't know what she wants. Let alone what she wants being aligned with the American people. Right? She's a nobody, Camilla Harris. I got nothing from her. I, I couldn't even... Women, women in healthcare. When they were talking about healthcare, she said women. She brought up women. Right? Dude, gotta go. <laughs> That's what she said about Trump. Dude, gotta go. Now, Camilla Harris gotta go. So, um, who else? Amy Klobuchar. Oh, my God. I can't stand this lady. Make Russia great again, she said. That's what Trump wants to do. Make Russia great again. Medicare for all is a pipe dream, she said. She called it a pipe dream. Fuck you, <laughs> Amy Klobuchar. She's she's short and she's arrogant, and she's um. She's just got a smug face about her. Not presidential. Um, I get a bad feeling. She's wrong on the policy. She doesn't understand. If you're not for Medicare for All, as I said, then you're for, you know, pharmaceutical companies raping the country, raping people for their hard-earned cash. So Amy Klobuchar, take her off the list. Julian Castro, he, he presents well. Right? He's one of these guys. He, he, he looks nice. He sounds nice. He, he's eloquent. He doesn't lose his cool. But, again, an empty suit. He's just Obama- an Obama wannabe. Oh, I was in Obama's cabinet. Pick me. Right? Uh, it's just nothing. There was nothing. I didn't even have a comment to say about him. And I'll get to the good stuff in a minute. Just, you know, let me get the shit sandwiches out of the way. Um, Joe Biden. Fucking nobody. Come on, man. How is... Come on, man. Come on, man. Man. Come on, man. Joe Biden. This is nothing. This just... Uh, how, how how you got these things done? You know, he's just dumb as a box of rocks. 
he doesn't he has okay he, yes he has the experience he was in the situation room under Obama but he, he doesn't he just seems to lack the the basic understanding of where the American people are at he doesn't seem to he's he's off on almost every policy money and politics give him the money I'll take the money you know he doesn't he doesn't even know what what, what you're talking about I have money billionaires oh no, those are my friends uh, would be a fucking disaster with and he can't win first of all to, to call him the the front runner at this point is you know ridiculous Trump will eat this guy alive right the whole the whole scandal with his son and the Ukraine that's all they'll talk about and Trump will win uh, he, the, and and the American people will lose either way you lose with Trump or you lose with Biden so pick one so he's he's a shit sandwich he's gone um, I think I got all the shit sandwiches. All right, so let's start from the five, the fifth, fourth, third, second, and first. So the fifth, I like this guy, um, Tom Steyer. A new man, Tom Steyer, we see. Uh, who is he? He's a billionaire, right? And he made a case for breaking the grip of corporations like nobody else on the stage. I would have given him number one, but... Who is he, right? I, I don't know who he is, right? He, he could just be some con artist, some salesman. If you put me on that stage, I'll win the debate on that on that argument. But you still have to ask yourself, well, who is this? Who is this guy? You still got to kick the tires. But the fact that he's in his 70s, he's just a 70-year-old man, and he he stood for breaking the grip of corporations. He endorsed Bernie on income and wealth inequality, the, the, uh, the idea of, of that being a problem. Strong anti-corruption corporation message. So he came from out of nowhere. Tom Steyer gets flying points for coming out of nowhere. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Ooh. Tulsi Gabbard, the, the biggest put down. Tulsi's tough. Tulsi Gabbard is a tough tough chick right she took down first Pete Buttigieg on first she took down CNN and 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 uh, New York Times for calling her a Putin puppet round the clock on their networks and she took him right to the face she took it right to their face and said you guys are disgusting and that was cool right you get points for that Tulsi Gabbard taking down the uh, CNN commentators Anus Cooper and Barnett and the other one, the New York Times guy. I, right to their face, she said it. She said, before she answered the question, she says, you guys have been calling me this bullshit for so long, fuck you. Right, so you got, you got to love her for that. Um, Tulsi Gabbard also said the one thing that nobody else dare say, which was that she said on the, on the issue of impeachment of Trump, she said, yes, impeachment is a distraction. It is. It's like that. that's the most obvious freaking thing in the world, that the impeachment of Trump, putting Trump front and center of a political campaign, is nothing but a distraction. And Tulsi Gabbard was the only one that said it. Uh, so she, um, she took down Pete Buttigieg on Syria. Pete Buttigieg was saying, no, 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 you can't, the, that uh, Syria, that... May, vilifying Turkey. Now Turkey out of nowhere is our enemy. Turkey's not an enemy. Turkey's an ally. A very, very sovereign nation. A very peaceful. Yeah, yeah, they're Muslim and they're, they're, it's an Arabic nation. But I have friends that have gone to Turkey and say, it's a beautiful, wonderful place. Wonderful, peaceful people. And now you want to vilify it because of a power vacuum that Trump created? That, you know, arguably is really none of our business. So, but, but, uh, so Tulsi Gabbard takes down Pete Buttigieg on that issue. Buttigieg is, is arguing that, that we should stay in Syria forever and ever and ever. And Tulsi Gabbard brought it back to the cause of the problems there are regime change ideas, the ideology, the ideology of changing the regime, right? It causes the problem, causes the power vacuum. And all the, all the problems that are created 
after you do that are simply the are simply the symptom of creating a power vacuum by trying to replace the leaders of nations which we have no business being so Tulsi Gabbard that is her that is her forte that is her her strength and for Buttigieg to go in there and try to fight her off was ridiculous was profound another profound thing was when Tulsi Gabbard was speaking on the last the la one of the last times she spoke there she, uh, they, they talked about she talked about her health and there was a there was one frame where it was Bernie Sanders Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden all in their 70s right looking at Tulsi Gabbard as if she was a child with a lot of potential and they they it was like you saw the I think what you saw there was the age gap Tulsi Gabbard's 38 Bernie Sanders is 78 He's a 40 year, that's a 40 year, between 30 and 40 years of life difference. Some, those people are at the end of their life. Tulsi Gabbard is in the middle of life with, with the best part of it coming. And I, I just, I saw that with Pete Buttigieg, though Pete Buttigieg was wrong on the subject. Tulsi Gabbard would be the best contestant if she would embrace Medicare for all, if she would... <clears throat> acknowledge more full throat that the corporations are the root of the problem. I think she would be a better candidate. Excuse me. Uh, again, I don't. I the, the, my fundamental problem with Tulsi Gabbard is the BDS stuff that she's pro too pro Israel and that she is a militant. Like she believed that <clears throat> she believes Bush. You know, she believed Bush with weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. I, that's a fool. I, I, I don't believe it. I don't. If you believe that, I don't believe you ever. Right? And not only did she believe Bush, but she enlisted in the military as a result of Bush's testimony that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and that somehow the American people were in danger. So that's where I differ with Tulsi Gabbard. And, and I always will. So, number three, Andrew fucking Yang. Oh, my God. I love this guy. A basic, universal basic income. He, he's screaming it. Before, last debate, it was stupid, and they were laughing at him. Now, they're like, hey, it's a pretty good idea. Oh, I would try that. Even Fidel Castro, Castro from the court. Yeah, yeah, we'll give it a try. Right. Andrew Yang said the most important thing of the night. He said that we must stimulate the economy from the bottom up. Oh, damn. That's the way you do it. Andrew Yang said that shit. I can't find his fucking name. Yeah. Trickle up economics. He didn't say that. I said that. But he said you, by giving everybody $1,000 a month, you stimulate the economy from the bottom up, not from the top down. Top-down, trickle-down economics is a failed principle that Greenspan said on his deathbed, well, he's not dead yet, but close to being dead, said that we were wrong. We miscalculated the greed of corporations. Right? It's all out in the open now. Reaganomics, trickle-down economics fails. So Andrew Yang stands on that stage as the only person talking about a trickle up uh, uh, a way of stimulating the economy. A bottom up stimulus. Brilliant idea. Right? I, I, don't, I don't really hear him attacking the corporations, getting money out of politics and all that stuff. So he still is behind the eight ball on that, in my view. But uh, we'll give him number three. Alright, so number two you got to give it to Elizabeth Warren, right? Elizabeth Warren is the number two. She looks the healthiest on the stage. She looks the smartest. She looks like she'll, you know, she doesn't quite look like the grandma at this point. But, again, Elizabeth Warren has a history of turncoat. 
where she will say one thing in public and then flip like Hillary Clinton later. She's not strong on single-payer health care. She was dodging the question of taxation. Will the middle-class taxation amount go up? Well, even if it does go up, it doesn't matter because the huge savings when you tax corporations will, uh, you know, ultimately compensate for that. And she made that clear that the American people will have more of their own money, more money, more liquidity in their pocket under her administration by getting the money out of politics, by breaking up big tech, by breaking up big corporations. Right? So again, the number one subject is money in politics and getting money out of politics, getting, getting, um, breaking up the giant corporations. That's the number one issue, right? Everything else is secondary. Unless you fix that problem, you're not going to stop the wars. You're not going to stop poverty in America. You're not going to stop vast income and wealth inequality in this, in this country. You'll never get single-payer health care. You'll never get college tuition at city and state universities free. You'll never, uh, uh, you'll never uh, vacate uh, uh, student loan debt. Never. Right? They all talked about gun violence. In a broad stroke, they're all for it. Uh, uh, gun, um, you know, gun grabbers to some degree. That's just something you have to deal with with the Democrats. I think if the number one candidate, my number one candidate, Bernie Sanders, gets in, he's not going to push for, for gun grabbing at all, in my view. Because he doesn't really, he's from Vermont and he doesn't really, he doesn't really believe that, you know, so I think Bernie Sanders would be the best on, on the uh, uh, anti-gun grab. So, so that's Elizabeth Warren. Um, uh, Quote, corporations have no loyalty to the people. Ooh, no loyalty to the people. No, they don't. Right? Because they're not people. And as I said before, they're looting the country. That is the problem. So, number one, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the, is the author. I wrote the damn bill. Universal single-payer health care, health care, Medicare for all. The single payer being the United States government. Eliminate the pharmaceutical lobby and get rid of the insurance companies. That's Bernie Sanders. He's the founding father, the author of the bill. Right? And everything else revolves around Bernie. When you talk about a Green New Deal, Bernie Sanders was saying, you know, the fossil fuel industry is, is, is just as bad as the pharmaceutical industry industry and it's just as bad as the military industrial complex it's been saying it for 40 years is Bernie Sanders too old to run for president well I'll tell you his mind is not as sharp as he was in his 50s with the advent of YouTube you could go back and look at all his early speeches and his mind was sharp and fast and his his he was agile and I, I think that you do see a some deprivation in his mental facility. Could he still be a great president? I think he could. I think he, I think he's, I don't really think that, I think he needs to learn how to pace himself. The heart attack thing is irrelevant at this point because he's standing there, he fully recovered. How does a 78 year old guy recover from a heart attack in two weeks? And he's standing up there like there's no problem, there's no big deal. So that's really not the issue of his heart, but overall age you know if you're going to pick if you're going to pick Elizabeth Warren or or shit sandwich Joe Biden or, or even Trump is going to be in his 70s mid 70s Bernie Sanders is right in there with them so you'll have Trump who's raping the country with the corporations at 74 and Bernie Sanders at 79 or 80 does it really matter not really so so is is new green new deal um, cancel the student debt that's all Bernie Sanders Bernie Sanders is still the only hope for any change whatsoever 
You want a Green New Deal? Vote for Bernie Sanders. You want Medicare for all, single payer? Government being the single payer? Vote for Bernie Sanders. You want to get rid of student debt? Vote for Bernie Sanders. You want to decrease the military spending? Vote for Bernie Sanders. You want to legalize marijuana in this country? Vote for Bernie Sanders. Yeah. But again, we're, we're looking not, let's not lose sight of the fact that we're looking at a rigged primary. Right? We saw CNN yesterday with, uh, you know, uh, Project Veritas exposing CNN as being a fraud, as being, you know, as being the pet project of one man, uh, Zucker, right? Jeff Zucker, right? How the whole thing, how the whole media is a scam, and so are the politics. So is the DNC, the, the fake primaries, the rigged primaries, as we saw in 2016. So let's not lose sight of that. But nonetheless, we get to watch the shit show of Democrats on stage. And we conclude that the whole thing revolves around Bernie Sanders. And that although he is aging and although the stage is rigged to make him look small and weak and just a pee in the pod, he's still the author of all of these, all of these discussions that we're having in 2019. That's Bernie Sanders. So if you want those things and you agree that that corporate tyranny is raping our country, is hurting our nation, and it isn't. It has nothing to do with any ideology of communism or socialism or or capitalism or any of these other titles you tag on it. You have to look at the current event, which is money and politics and corporate tyranny. If you if you can swallow that and digest that and know that we're on the wrong course right now with no possibility of change under Trump or, you know, bite your tongue Biden uh, or Elizabeth Warren, then the only, the only logical choice is Bernie Sanders. So, again, if the Democrats pick Bernie Sanders as the candidate and back him wholeheartedly, he will be the next president of the United States. He will have eliminated Trump. Any other choice... In my view, any other Democratic choice other than Bernie Sanders gives us Donald Trump for four more years. Marcus Conti, reporting.